Hello everyone, this is Jenny Gibbons of Woodsy Studio, and today I'm going to walk you through creating a character in the visual novel framework for UE4. And this video is actually a remake of one that I originally made for the release version of the visual novel framework. And since then I've added um, a lot of changes uh, to the layer system that should make it easier to set them up, um, hopefully. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this side portrait, uh, it looks the same right now, but it's actually working differently behind the scenes. It's using the same sprites um, that are used uh, for, the, for the character when it's displayed in 3D space. So it should save you um, some workload there. You can also uh, add new poses for the character. Um, for instance, this is one pose with her hand up here. This is another pose with her, um, hand, her hands on her hips. And um, it's easier to add multiple poses now and not have to repeat the same layer information over and over. So I'll show you how that works. Um, first of all, I'm just I'm going to create a whole new character. And to do that, I've got some sprites that, I've, uh, that are ready to be imported in. Um, it's from another game, Goes of the Fae, The Last Sacrament. It's the character, Young Katarina. So I'll be using her sprites to make a new character. So the very first thing I'll do, I'll go to the enums here. I'll go to characters. And this is uh, my enum list of all the characters in the game. Oh, it looks like I, I have actually added her before. Um, but if you wanted to add anyone new, you would put them here. All right, so she's on my character list. Now there's another character list. It's a data table containing um, a lot of detailed information for all the characters in the game. So I'll open that up next. I'll create a new row uh, with this plus sign here. I'm going to name it, just, just put, it, put one here. Um, these indexes can be used to track costumes. Um, in the global BP eventually. So if you plan on using costumes, um, try to rank your characters from like most important or most likely to have a costume change um, to least. Uh, in the global BP here, there's an array that can be used to hold uh, costume variables. I'll just show you that real quick. It's the costume array. So character zero is zero in the costume array in the global BP. So just so you know, uh, this number is important um, for costumes if you plan to use that. All right, so for character, I'll select Katarina from the enum list. Character actor, you can usually you just leave it blank. Uh, parent actor is going to be the default. That's what it'll use if you just leave it blank. Uh, but if you ever wanted to make a child of the parent actor and have exceptions for this character, you could... Um, tell it to spawn that child actor here uh, instead of the parent actor. And then we're going to be uh, putting in expression and pose data tables, but we don't have those set up yet. So for now, I'm just leaving it with this. There are all these other things we can adjust here if we want. But for now, I've just created a, a row for her. So next, let's import her sprites. Go to our assets, characters. I'm going to make a new folder for her. Call it Katarina. And I'm going to break the folders here into the different poses that I want to use eventually, pose one and pose two. So Katarina mostly uh, has just one pose, except uh, sometimes her head tilts a little bit to the side. So I've selected the sprites for pose one for Katarina where her head is tilted slightly to the side. So I'm going to drag all of those in here to the pose one folder. There's something else I always do here. I will right click, bulk edit, and set it to uh, the MIP gen settings to no MIP maps so that those sprites never appear blurry. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in her pose two sprites. Gotta remember one those are. And then the same thing, I will take off mip maps. All right, now with the textures highlighted, I'm going to right click, go to Sprite Actions, Create Sprite. 
Uh, I just want to note that you can also use extract sprites if you um, want to take out the transparency around your sprites. This is really good to do for um, if you're going to make sprite sheets and that sort of thing. It'll pull separated sprites out for you. Um, and you can certainly use that in the VN framework. But for simplicity now, I'm just going to do create a basic sprite out of all of these. All right, we've got all of her sprites set up here. Also going to do the same thing for pose two. Make sprites of all these. Create sprite. All right. So now that we have these sprites, we need to actually tell the VN framework to display them when that character is making certain expressions. So to do that, we're going to make first a pose data table and then an expression data table. And just so you know, the structures for those data tables are here in the structure, uh, structures folder. The one that's used to create your pose um, information is called uh, ST pose data. And all of that's here. You can add padding information for displaying it in widgets. If you um, are do using sprite sheets and you're cutting out transparency, you want to add that padded information. And then when you're doing your expression layers, that uses the, uh, let me see, ST pose layers here. So if you ever needed to change these for your own purposes, those are the structures these data tables are going to use. So I'm going to go to character data. I'm going to make a new folder for Katarina. So first we're going to do the um, pose data table. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to miscellaneous data table. And then we want to use that pose data. So ST pose data and press OK. Um, you can call this, you know, you can use whatever um, naming structure that you'd like. I do something like dt cat um, poses and then zero. And that tells me this is going to be the poses data table. The zero at the end tells me that this is going to be for the base default costume, which is a value of zero. So open that up. I'm going to press the plus button to make a new row. You can name this whatever. The the number here does not matter. It's just there to, to make a row name. And our first pose is just going to be pose one here. And here is where you drop in all of the sprites that will normally be used for that pose. And the great thing about this is you only have to enter it once. And then when you're doing the expressions, you only need to enter in any sprites that are different from these for each expression. So to start with the body, um, the thing about this uh, Katarina sp sprite, uh, these layers that I imported, is I combined her body and clothes into one layer. So for this, we're just going to use the body and drop that in. Um, actually, we could put it either in the body or the clothes layer. It doesn't matter. So let's just put it in clothes. For her head, I'm just going to use her base head. And remember that uh, like her, her normal expression. And for each expression, um, what we can do is just overwrite this with another layer. But for now, we'll just put in her, her normal expression. Hair front is going to be that front layer of hair that goes over her face and um, that will lay over her clothes. Drop that in there. Hair back is whatever's going to show behind her clothes and, and drop behind her body. Put that there. Uh, we're not going to use the wild card. Uh, for the blank flip book, we'll need to make a new flip book here. I'm going to highlight these two sprites. Say create flip book. Make that there. Just put it at a frame rate of seven. And you drop that one into the flip book section here. And for mouth, I'm going to use these three mouths. Create flip book. And now we've got her mouth animation. So um, if I were to trim these sprites and take out all the transparency, 
um, that's when I would go in and enter the appropriate padding. Uh, if you don't do that and you've trimmed your sprites, then they're going to show up pretty wonky in the, uh, in the widgets as the side portraits. They'll still look fine in 3D space, but they will look um, strange in widgets because widgets need that information to place them correctly. All right, so we're done setting her pose. And the great thing about that is now um, for her, when we say each expression, we don't need to repeat that information over and over. So just in this base folder here, I'm going to go right click blueprints. Uh, oh wait, miscellaneous, sorry, and data table. And we're going to do ST pose layers. Name that as you would like. All right, and now we're just going to make a, uh, a new row here for each of her expressions. And we need to say which pose it's using. We're going to do pose one here. Uh, so I wouldn't, um, yeah, for, for her normal expression, I don't actually need to even put anything here. I'm already using her normal expression in the uh, pose data table. Um, so I can actually just leave that completely blank. Now for, let's see, let's do angry. Some of these will use a different pose, so we'll make that when we need to. Yeah, let's see. Her angry face is in, is the other pose. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up her other pose. I'm in the, back in the pose data table now. I'm gonna make sure this row is for pose two. Um, I, I will have to repeat some of the same information here just because in this, this pose is actually really similar to the first one. Same thing with the mouth. Make sure that looks okay. And drop that in for the mouth. So now we've got this other pose set up. All right, so if we go back to the expressions, her, the, uh, which I just called costume zero, all right, we're going to set this to pose zero, uh, pose two, because I know that her head tilts um, over when she's uh, doing the angry expression. So I will go ahead and put in her frowning head here. All right, we'll just keep going down for each expression. Sad head. smile. Just repeat this smile here. That's pose two. Got surprised. That's also pose two. Drop in the head. And this one actually has, I have like a, her eyes get wider and I need to use a different blink animation. So I'm actually going to overwrite the, the blink animation as well. Drop that in down here for the blink. All right, almost done. Got uncertain. And that is pose one. So I just leave that and drop in the head. So now we've actually got what we need to uh, display her in 3D space. I'm gonna save everything. All right, and now that we've got those um, data tables created, we're gonna go back to this character DT list. Um, this is like our master one that you find in the character data folder. And I'm gonna drop in uh, poses zero. Hmm, where did I put the other one? I didn't organize this very well. I'm going to put the pose data table here. 
then I have to find where I put her. Yeah, my bad. I put that in the wrong folder, so I'm just going to drag that here. Say move here. Fix up redirectories. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to drop that in as the expression DT. All right, so now we've got those set up. Save all. So let's test actually displaying her in the game. I'll need to put her in a scene of some sort. Look, might as well just put her here in the intro. All right, so let's have her show up. Um, here at the beginning, I'm gonna make a new row and just drop it here near the beginning. Say, Katarina. And if Jessica is over here, I'm gonna move Jessica over to the right a bit more. Then put Katarina at negative 45, so they'll be on each different size of the screen. And you always want to enter a scale value. So I'll put one there. And let's give her something to say. Let's see, let's do a smile expression. Say hello. I'm Katarina. Let's have her change expression so we can see each pose. I have two different poses. All right. All right, let's see how that looks. A second here to play. All right, so we're going to start at the beginning. There's Katarina, and everything's working. I, I pressed the rollback button there to go back to the other line. Everything's working fine. Her blinks and animations are updating based on the pose, and it all looks good. So I do need to point out something important here. Um, I mentioned earlier that the great one of the great things about this new system is that you can use the same sprites for both a um, widget and uh, for the character that shows up in, in the 3D environment. Um, but you, you will need to do a few more changes. Specifically, you'll need to trim your sprites and add padding uh, before you put those in, in a widget. So if I were to try to display Katarina as a widget right now, um, it would look a little wonky. Um, because keep in mind that you're still using these huge 2048 by 2048 sprites um, that have a huge amount of blank space in them. So uh, I removed her spawning information here so she'll show up in a widget. So if I do the beginning and she shows up, okay. So it's trying to display her as a side portrait and uh, because she's this humongous texture with spacing all around her, uh, she's showing up in a weird spot. So what you really want to do is trim your sprites. In general, you want to do this anyway to save memory later on and uh, set padding for uh, each layer. So uh, in one of my next tutorial videos, I will show you how to do that, um, how to make a sprite sheet and set up all the, the padding appropriately. So that sums up the basic character creation for the Visual Novel Framework. And later I'll show you uh, how to trim your sprites and set up padding for them. Uh, thanks for watching and, and please consider supporting me on Patreon if you enjoy my work and tutorials and are also interested in the games that I make using this code. Thanks so much for watching and good luck creating.